It turns out that the default human being is female. Being born male comes down to a single gene. The Y has suffered through years and years of misunderstanding. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. I'm Lucky Severson, and this is Secrets of the Sequence. There was an obscure song on the radio back in the 60s that starts out, Are you a boy or are you a girl? With your long brown hair, you look like a girl. The singer is obviously confused by outward appearances, but to geneticists, there's almost no confusion. The genetics of sex are virtually certain at conception, though whether you're a boy or a girl seems to be a toss of the genetic coin. On sexual determination, in the human genome, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. For 22 of those pairs, a chromosome from the father teams up with the same chromosome from the mother. The 23rd pair is different. It can come in an X version and a Y version. The egg always has a single X chromosome. Sperm can carry either an X or a Y. If it's an X, the embryo develops with an XX pair and it is female. If the fertilizing sperm carries a Y, it is a boy. Since you have to add something to make a male, clearly, the default human being is female. Um, in any case, somewhere there are 83, 84, 85... Dr. David Page teaches and researches the subject of sex chromosomes um, and the Y okay. chromosome the in particular. Your birth, once it was established that you were healthy enough to cry, uh, what was the next question on your parents' mind, on everybody else's mind? Boy or, girl. Boy or girl, you got it. So how did your parents and your doctors or whoever else was in the delivery room, how did they figure out whether you were a boy or a girl? <laughs> um, well, uh, there's a lot of laughing here. Um, uh, so they, they took a look and they saw whether your external genitalia were those of a male or a female. And so having determined that you were a girl or a boy on this basis, your parents could finally decide what name to give you and they could announce your existence to the world. But um, David Page anyway, wears several hats so we in the research community. He teaches biology and genetics at MIT, um, conducts research on the sex chromosomes the chromosome at the Whitehead Institute and gives yes, public yes, lectures. His current focus is to find out why the Y, or male chromosome, is unlike all the others in the genome. A typical chromosome has a few thousand genes. The Y chromosome has only about 40 or 50 different genes on it. So it's a, it's a relatively sparsely populated rural chromosome. But what are those genes? There's a gene on the Y chromosome called SRY. That stands for Sex Determining Region of the Y chromosome. The SRY gene on the Y chromosome has a very important role in all of our lives. Before fertilization, the egg has the potential to become either a male or female embryo. The decision to develop ovaries and be female, or develop testes and be male, is made by a single gene on the Y chromosome called the SRY gene. So, seven weeks after the egg that gave rise to us was fertilized by the sperm that gave rise to us. Seven weeks after that happened, the SRY gene, if it's present, raises its hand and says, I'm here, instructs a number of other genes to start the process of making a testis. But then it disappears and is never heard from again. That makes SRY a pretty important well, male gene, and the Y chromosome emphatically the male chromosome. But what about the other 50 genes on the Y? Then there is the, the ball Z2 locus, which is uh, self-confidence unlinked to ability. Um, then <coughs> identifying aircraft, mom for you, which is a fascination with spiders and reptiles and such. No other chromosome gets cartoons like this made about it. The Y has suffered through years and years of misunderstanding. And it was so there are three types of genes on the Y chromosome. SRY triggers the formation of the testes. There's a type of housekeeping genes that regulate basic cell functioning. And another type, like the DAS gene, is responsible for sperm production. 
so you have to keep them, Doug, what's the story? You have to keep them pretty dense to keep them from... Um, you have to keep them at an intermediate density. Yeah, they look pretty juicy to me. They're pretty good. About one in every 4,000 boys is born with a hole in his Y chromosome that causes male infertility. Page's lab is putting human sperm-making genes into infertile mice to see which ones are the most important to male fertility. In this case, a, a defect has been produced in a mouse spermatogenesis gene. We're going to see if we can do a little gene therapy on this mouse and rescue that defect using the human Y spermatogenesis gene. And that will in turn tell us a lot about how the human Y spermatogenesis genes work. Figure that out and it could lead to a fertility therapy. One in six American couples is infertile and about one third of the time it's caused by the male. It's just one of the genetic puzzles that makes the Y chromosome so important to both males and females. The one question that I'm asked most frequently is what do these X and Y chromosomes have to do with, with sexual orientation? Do, these, do the X and the Y chromosomes make you straight or gay? We don't yet understand much, if anything, about the connection between the sex chromosomes and this and how sexual identity uh, and sexual preference is actually established in the mind. Once the embryo decides to make testes or ovaries under the influence or absence of SRY, then those, uh, the, uh, the testis or the ovary then produces sex hormones the famous things like testosterone and estrogen and so on. And these sex hormones are actually responsible for masculinizing or feminizing many of the other parts of the body, including, it's thought, the brain. So now we know what the difference between girls and boys is, a gene called SRY. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television, with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.